Okay, is it possible to just flip them up one at a time? You know, this is important. I know there's not a lot of young women in here tonight, but uh, this is, put, uh, hang in there. But and I, put, I, I sent these emails out today and text messages because I want people to understand something. We live in a world that is so messed up, morally falling apart, and the Bible just gives us so much information about it. Okay, we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. We're supposed to be disciples. Well, if you can't find it, I'll just say there was a picture of a girl holding up a sign, and it simply said, there is more to be than I can be. Amen. Amen. Say, well, there's more to be than I can be. And that's when we talked about all of this, the, the, wicked, the wicked woman, the evil woman, the strange woman, and all these different things, and you well, there's this first one. What God, why God wants us to wait until marriage to make love. Yeah. Well, he's got a plan. See what people don't understand? They think God is old-fashioned. And he don't want you to have fun. But, he, you know, there's a verse of scripture in, in Proverbs chapter 4. I'm talking to the young people. Any person. I don't care who it is. It doesn't right. matter. If this is for everybody. But Proverbs chapter 4 says... Uh, in verse 20, it says, My son, give my ear attention to my words. Incline your ears to my, my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. When people live promiscuously out in the world, they're opening themselves up to sickness and disease. We have a... a, a, a an epidemic of sexually transmitted diseases, AIDS, people, and they're not getting them so much for living pr promiscuously as they are from sharing dirty needles, all just all kinds of things. And I talked about this last week, about how they have young girls that age of 12, they're making them get that, whatever it's called, I can't pronounce the name, shot, because they figure they're gonna have sex, so let's protect them. Instead of teaching them what the word says. Right, right, and see, and but it goes on to say, keep for out of it. It goes on to say in verse twenty-three, for out of it spring the issues of life. That word for issues is the life force within you. Okay, it, it, it's actually the word. Now, don't freak out, but it's the word where we get sperm from. It's your life. Yeah. It's what gives life to you. So the word of God isn't that it's old-fashioned. It just doesn't uh, meet up with today's standards. And today's standards don't mean anything because in 15 years they're going to change again and they're just going to keep changing and changing and changing and changing. The thing that's never changed is the word of God. Amen. And Amen. so that's why it's so important. And that's why we have so much, I mean, I, I read, I, get, I, I just read about all these different things happening in the world, and I, and I just say to myself, people would just obey what the word says. That doesn't mean you're going to have to be a, a wallflower. It doesn't mean you can't go out and date. It doesn't mean you can't do this. It doesn't mean you can't do that. It just means to live a straight up moral life be before God. Amen. You know, Amen. people make mistakes, and we're not coming against it, but people make mistakes. But, you know, there's a verse of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I don't know why I have notes. <laughs> Anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's just go there and take a look at it real quick. And you say, what does this have to do with young people? Because you're going to go to college. And, you know, we'll, okay. Okay, here, here it goes. Verse, ch chapter 1, verse 7. 1 Corinthians. Oh, chapter 1? No, chapter, ch 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm sorry. Verse 1. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me. And we said this before. What we see going on in the world today, we just think that, well, that's something new. But they've had the same problem back in biblical days. Yeah, yeah, going all the way back. And we looked at a lot of scriptures last week. It is not good for a man to touch a woman. Now, what he's saying there, it says, Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, 
and let each woman have her own husband. Okay? So it's saying it, sex is okay as long as you're married. All right? Amen. Outside of marriage, it'll harm your body, and it's a sin. But more than it being a sin, it'll harm your body. Sleeping with multiple partners will get, bring you sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hello. Yes. Amen. I heard a woman one time, she was telling this to the children's department. I'll never forget it. As long as I live, I almost fell over. It was a meeting. She, and she told her right there at the door. She goes, right, she goes, every man, every guy you sleep with, you're part of every other woman yes. you slept with. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. That puts it in a new light, don't it? Yes. But people, pastors don't like to talk about this stuff. People get all like, <laughs> well, let's go home and watch Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> The Sopranos or something. You know what I mean? Don't talk about it in church. This is where it needs to be talked about in church. Because the Bible's full of it. Right. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, all the stupid mistakes they made. And David and Solomon were the chief mistake makers. Amen. Yes. Caused David a lot of problems. Because he looked on another woman and lusted after her and, and had her husband killed. And then the baby died and, and his family... The sword never left his house because of something stupid. Yeah. Just a stupid mistake. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, let's go on just a little bit further. Let the husband render to his wife the affection that is due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband doesn't have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Now, <laughs> I think about that one, you know, in the context of whatever. But Because we teach this stuff at, ma at, at marriage seminars. You know, in other words, if the wife is feeling amorous, get on it, bro. <laughs> if the husband's feeling amorous, get on it. But if you don't give her due benevolence, the King James, affection, it ain't going to work. Amen. It just won't work. Amen. And so the Bible's pretty explicit in these things when it talks about them. It says, uh, and like, what? Let's see, hold on, I've got to focus in here. Yeah, I know where I'm at. And the wife does not have authority over her own body, the husband does, and likewise. Do not deprive one another except with consent, consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting in prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Oh, amen. Husbands and wives need to hear this because some women won't let their husband near them and then he goes out and finds the adulterous woman and now they got a problem. Yeah. No. Amen. Man, it got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but the, listen, if you have a problem with this, talk to the writer. <laughs> you know? So, in any event, I, I'm bringing that up because the world says that all that stuff that they said to do is old fashioned and don't do it anymore. And we have uh, uh, teenage pregnancies. We have divorce rates through the ceiling, kids with no fathers, single mothers. You got single fathers. Why? Simply because they did not read the instruction. Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. 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 So we said, okay, let's move on just a little bit more. So we talked about all these things, and uh, I, I promised my wife tonight I would not jump all over the book of Proverbs like I did last week. But uh, so when we talked about all these things, and, and, and I'll tell you, you guys, you, everybody should read the book of Proverbs. Amen. One chapter a day, 31 days, you can read the whole book of chapters every month. Amen. And when it's February, get a couple days off. 
And, and I would like to read it out of some like the New Living Translation or the Living Bible, something that really like that they really pull no punches. When, I know I, I didn't. I left that one home. Sorry, honey. All right, let me get to where I want to go. Then here. All right. So, as a matter of fact, give me your Bible. I want to read Proverbs chapter five, verses fifteen and twenty-three. Out of out of this. Proverbs chapter five. Okay, I'm going to read this right down to verse uh, 23. And then we'll just comment on it and, and, and we'll, we'll end this tonight, okay? It says, drink water from your own well. Share your love, with, share your love only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? You know, uh, you should reserve it for yourselves, not share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing to you. Re rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving, dear, a graceful dove. Let her breast satisfy you always. You, not every other guy around. Okay? Or every other woman. No, but, you know, but it's, I mean, let her breast satisfy you always. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? and fondle the breasts of a promiscuous woman. For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sin. They are ropes that catch and hold him. He will die of lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. Amen. So basically what we've said, there are women out there who are out to entice men. And men are so stupid that they get enticed by them. Yep. Amen. Okay. Amen. They get enticed by them. So it says, and now I'm going to read from the, like the King James Version, okay, because then I get to explain it better. Uh, Drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well. You know, it's it says, let your fountains not be dispersed abroad. Really, what that verse is saying, verse 16, is don't go out and have sex with everybody and have like 10 different kids with 10 different women. We see that in the world today. That's why our welfare system is, is crippling because everybody are out there having sex, having kids, and just getting the money. And guess who's paying for it? The law-abiding citizen. Okay? The one who goes out and works from 8 to 4 every single day, works his butt off, brings his money home, pays his taxes, just to support other people who are want to be promiscuous Amen. because they were never taught right. Okay, Amen. you know, uh, let your let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Solomon understood this. Solomon wrote this book. He understood. He urges the believer to hold fast to the one he first married. He had a eight hundred wives and two hundred girlfriends. <laughs> Thank God he had a lot of money. <laughs> Eight, was it 999 too many? Yeah, 999 too many women. All right? But he, and he understood it, and he's the guy who's writing this. You could tell him to make Huh? You could tell him to Well, I, they have to do it. Hopefully they're going to get, but here's the thing. He loved one woman and couldn't have her. No, Solomon. He read, he he just uh, what's the Psalm of Solomon? What's that? Song, Song of Solomon. Yeah. It's about it's about Israel, but it's about the one woman who he wanted and couldn't get her. Hello, and that's what so often happens to people. Okay, and so uh, it. It takes discipline. You know, we, we deal with so many people who have marriage problems. You know, it takes discipline to work out a marriage. Yeah. It's hard. 
It's hard. Divorce is not the answer to an unhappy marriage. It compounds the problem. God is a restoration. Sometimes it's the only way out of a marriage. Okay, but I, I'm telling you, with right counseling, 99% of the time it can be worked out. Not all the time. Mar and divorce happens, and the Bible talks about that. But, he, but he, the Word of God says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins Amen. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He, what did he tell the woman at the well of, uh, at, at, at the woman caught in adultery? He forgave her. Yep. He didn't hold, he didn't remind, he didn't go find her next week and say, don't forget what you did. You <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, I forgive you, sin no more. Yep. Amen. So now, and guess what? If she went out next week and did it again, Jesus would come there and say, I forgive you, sin no more. Hello? Amen. Amen. Doesn't give you a license to go out and sin all the time, though. That's Amen. the problem. And so, it, 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 there's, you got to, uh, man. I really, my own, my own thing is, I think when people commit adultery, it's just a lack of self-control in their life. Amen. Uh, that's it. All right? It says rejoice. Rejoice means to cheer up. Cheer up. You know, let me tell you, sex was God's invention, mm -hmm. not the devil. He told Adam and Eve, multiply. multiply. Right. So he knew what it was going to take for them to multiply. Mm -hmm. You know? And, 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 it's, and it's the one, the sexual relationship in a marriage is probably the most important foundation in a marriage. Because it was instituted, like marriage, by God. But today, the way sex is flaunted and played today, yeah. uh, you would think Satan designed it. Mm -hmm. And it's so wrong. Yeah. And, and God created sex for the joy of his children. That's why he says rejoice, cheer up, be happy. My wife and I married 48 years. And we are happy as you can be. Amen. 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 I don't need another woman. Amen. I don't want another woman. Amen. I'm happy with the woman I have. Amen. And hopefully she's happy with me. <laughs> she says I'm the boss. Now I believe her because she said it. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And don't forget it. You run the house. But I'm in control anyway. <laughs> and, and so... You could, even in, a bar, in, 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 in uh, Genesis, it says that the man and wife were naked and were not ashamed. The word ashamed there means embarrassed. You know, but then sin came. And when sin came, they covered up. They, they covered up. All right? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, in the Strong's Concordance, the word rejoice means to be glad, be joyful, to make merry. So sex is primarily for having children, but it's not the only reason. Amen. Okay? That's what, isn't it? It says that we're co-laborers with God. Amen. Well, aren't you glad God made it enjoyable to have children? Yes. But, then you got to raise them. Uh, <laughs> verse 19 says, let the, her breasts satisfy thee at all times. See, and I tell women all the time, your breasts are for your husband, not for other men to gain back. Amen. Amen. You ain't never been out to dinner to even out with my wife. I don't know how much. I, a woman will come over and she'll have a low cut top on and she'll say, you know what? You're going to pop out on you. You better cover them up. Better not fall my husband's ditch. Amen. That's the truth. <laughs> now, they, so if you're married, there shouldn't be something to be, be ashamed of or anything like Amen. that, okay? Praise God. Be ravished with, always with her love. Means intoxicated, enraptured. A husband should be like in, 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 in enraptured with his wife's love. Amen. Her body should thrill him. And it just that's like yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Amen. It goes on in verse 20. And why will you be ravished with a strange woman? Why? And here's what it says. You know, you can fool people, but you can't fool God. Man. Amen. He sees it all. 
He yep. sees it all. He sees everything. And so, you know, we get these examples from the Word of God about how we should uh, treat our wives. Ephesians, men. Well, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 28. I'm going to read it to you because I want to say something. If you're a man in here, you're a young man, I'm going to tell you something right now. Heed these words. Wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. And that's where everybody, that's where legalism leaves off. And the wife becomes this, you do what I say. I'm the head of the house. That guy needs a frying pan on his head. I can't stand when a, a guy becomes so stinking spiritual that he thinks he knows everything. Amen. Amen. Anyway, let me go on. Husbands, love your wives. Nobody gets to that part. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should, she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Yes, amen. You know what your wife wants, men? more than anything else in the entire planet. You. Amen. End of story. People need to get that little thing rolling in their brain and get it in their heart. Women want their husbands more than anything else because they're the protector. They're the God. You can buy her all the presents and the gifts in the world and they will mean nothing unless you give them yourself. Yeah. We were just talking to somebody the other day. They just went through the same problem. It's family members of some people we know. Everything. $50,000 vacations. And it's not one is wrong and the other one's right. They're both wrong. But the point being is give yourself. Be the gift that just keeps on giving. Amen. All right? See? Because when a, a woman's lonely, she don't need a gift. She don't even need a rose. Amen. To cheer her up. Amen. It's your presence they want. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's your heart. Put your arm around them. Love them. And just agree with them. You know, what, it, you know what's really great? If a, you know, sometimes women are great for this, okay? And a, a woman will come home and say, you know, so and so did this, blah, blah, blah. And the husband, now he wants to defend his wife. Well, just go tell her off. And then they get to a fight. Mm -hmm. Just say, okay, honey, it's okay. Don't worry about it, you know? You know, I, they don't want to, like, go beat that person up. They're just hurt. So we want to, now we want to go get, a, get the boxing ring set up. Put them both in a boxing ring and work it out. That rascal, they're no good anyway. I told you that when woman was in trouble. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. He that loves him himself loves his wife. And then, then we have the, 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 the other two women, Folly and the Foolish, who represents the foolish women, woman, and then Wisdom, which represents the virtuous woman. Amen. Okay, and that's in Proverbs chapter 9. And, and you, when you compare those two, and we're not going to have time to compare them, but I'll just briefly go over it. Proverbs chapter 9, all right? It's, you can read it, okay? Read the whole chapter. I read from verses 13 to 18. Well, let me read them. Right. Okay, Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing. <laughs> there you go. You ever see that? 
Seems good in a real way. For she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call of those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Who, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Mm -hmm. But he that does not know that, that, but he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are all in the depths of hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's, that's the foolish woman, okay? The foolish woman. And they do it. They sit there. They know how to do it. They lure you in, especially the word, the word simple is the word moron. The person, just simple, just simple. That's the foolish woman. That's folly. That's the temptation of the devil. He hasn't changed. That's how we get you. But there's another woman we're going to look at here in a minute in chapter 7. Okay? This woman in chapter 7 is looking out of her house watching this whole thing take place. And that woman is wisdom. Okay? Wisdom looks at this and is trying to explain to us, look at the stupid person. Okay, let's start. Where are we going to start here? Let's see. Verse, verse 6. Now, this is wisdom speaking. The first one we just looked at was foolishness speaking. Wisdom says, For at the window of my house I looked through the lattice and saw it among the simple. I perceived young among the youths, a young man devoid of understanding, passing along the street near her corner. You know, prostitutes call the street walker, right? Yep. Give me that one, but I knew I should have brought my other Bible. I like the one we just had the King James. <laughs> All right, where was it? Verse 13. All right. No? Verse 6. Verse 6. You're right. Thank you. I'm going to read it out of here and then we'll just make a couple comments. When I was at the window of my house looking through the curtain, I saw some na naive young men, and one in particular who lacked common sense. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman. Strolling down the path by her house, it was twilight in the evening, as, dark, as deep darkness fell. The woman approached him and seductively dressed and sly of heart. She was brash and rebellious. Never content to stay at home. She's often in the streets and the markets soliciting at every corner. You can see them on 42nd Street and Broadway. Okay, they're all there. Oh. Huh? All right. She threw, she's so brave, she threw her arms around him and kissed him. With a brazen look, she said, I just made my peace offerings and fulfilled my vows. Now, this young, ignorant, naive guy, probably a Christian. Could be. Could be. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Now, she figures he might be a Christian. So she says, I have just made my peace offering and fulfilled my vows. I go to church, too. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. yeah. I go to church, too. You're the one I was looking for. I came out to find you, and here you are. My bed is spread with beautiful blankets, my colored sheets of Egyptian linen. I've perfumed my bed with mirth and alloys and cinnamon. Come, let us drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caress. For my husband's not home. He's away on a long trip, and he's taken a wallet full of money with him and won't return till next month. She seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. He followed her at once like an ox going to slaughter. He was like a stag caught in a trap, awaiting the arrow to pierce his heart. He was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing what it was gonna cost him his life. Wow. My friend, that is 
the bottom line of fooling with folly, not being careful. The woman was a, pro listen, she was a prostitute. Prostitutes don't come out in the daytime. They only come out at night. Right. Okay? Uh, and, and, and it's obvious that this woman was out to get him. All right? Uh, and once you have that affair, man, I'll tell you right now, your life is ruined. You don't know what she's got. Well, you know? And you see so much of that stuff on a, and, and in verse 7 and 8 said he was passing through the streets. The word passing is the word sauntering. In other words, he was bored going nowhere. Just hanging out on the bad side of town just to see what's going on. And she was there to get him. And that's the way it happens. It happens. You know, she caught him. She kissed him. You know, she went through the whole thing. You know, and the outcome wasn't pretty. Amen. He was led to slaughter. Spear through his liver. I'll tell you, like a bird. An ox to slaughter. He was caught in a trap. And that's what happens when we live in a moral life. Which the world says, perfectly fine. Right. It's perfectly fine, man. Let's go party. You know? I, I always, you know, we, we usually down uh, over Easter break down in Florida, you know, you go down to, like up to Fort Lauderdale, South Beach, and if these parents saw their daughters, they would kill them. <laughs> and everybody that's around them. I mean, they're just, you know, they have, they have some of the shows on television when they try to, yeah, I mean, it's just really the way it is yeah. in real life. I mean, that's the way it is, but why? The world says that's just fine. Things happen. I'll tell you what happens. Suicide rate climbs when people start living that way because they get depressed and discouraged. All right? HD, SDD, sexually transmitted diseases. You got that HPV vaccination. Telling you get for your son and daughter because they're going to go to spring break. And you just never know what's going to happen, you know? I really think, I don't know, man, in my little brain, something ain't right. <clears throat> something is not right. But then when you read Proverbs chapter 9, I'm not going to go there. Proverbs chapter 9, 1 to 6. It says, Wisdom has built her house and has carved out seven columns. She has prepared a great banquet mixed with wines and set the table. She has sent her servants to invite everyone to come. She calls out from the heights overlooking the city. Come in with me, she urges the simple. To those who lack good judgment, she says, come and eat my food, drink my, dr and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways behind Amen. and begin to live. Learn to use good judgment. Amen. The wise woman is wisdom. In, in the Bible. And to read more about that, we always do the virtuous woman, Proverbs chapter 31. That is wisdom. The per virtuous woman is wisdom. Amen. And I'm here to tell you tonight that if people seriously would take the word of God, just a book of Proverbs, young people, even in your schoolwork will improve. And, and when we have proof of that, you know, because we used to do it with our kids. And, it's just, it's like God's, you're taking God's medicine every day. You know how many take vitamins? How many take supplements? You know, you take the supplement. And you don't see nothing too much at first, but then you have to wonder if you stop taking mm -hmm. it, you start to get really like, Amen. it's the same thing with it. One Amen. proverb, how long could it take to read one proverb in the morning? I don't think there's any more than 32 verses. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, or maybe 36. That's a real long one. But if you did just... Old people, young people, little kids, read them to them. Just read them to them. Oh, I'm busy. i got to get up. i got to go to work. i got to go do this. i got to do that. Well, you got two options here. One option. Get up early. <laughs> And read it. Or the other option is don't get beat up. I, you know, 
Amen. Amen. All right, praise Lord. Honey, you can come back up here. Amen. I don't know if you got anything, guys, but Amen. I just want yes. you to Amen. This, this is the world that we live in today. And it's not a pretty place. 